Hey, welcome to Ekidel.com, where future leaders come to improve their knowledge. Hello, welcome to Ekidel. My name is Justice Umoka. I am your instructor. Today, we will be learning how to add wind load or wind effect to our building structure. Now, just as the, the word is, Im, implies wind load, before you must add your wind load to your structure or building model, it must reach a certain height. Now, the height at which you can consider adding wind load to your structure is at least 10 meters. So once your building is at least 10 meters, which is precisely three-story building, at that point, you are expected to add wind load or wind effect to your structure. Now, now to add a wind load to, to a structure, you have to consider many things. One, first thing you consider is the wind speed of the area, which you can get from the from either a weather scientist or from other and regional planner in your state or country. Now, this this model right now, this building is a seven-story building, and it is a hotel building sitting on a raft foundation. Now, the height of this seven-story building is 28.2 meters, which is already here. The height of this seven-story building is 28.2 meters. So at this level, it is expected to have an adverse wind effect. An adverse wind effect based on the height and the size of the of the structure. Now, to add a wind load to our structure or to your structure in using using Prota structure software, you will click on analysis tab, then you click on building analysis, and then a dialog box will appear, then you click on wind and story loads. Once you click this, a dialog box will appear and then you click on wind load calculator. A dialog box will appear and then you click on parameters. Once you click on parameters, then you begin to fill in your parameters. While filling in the parameters of the wind of the wind effect or wind load to your structure, you have to be very specific and very careful. You have to be very accurate because whatever value you add here is what the structure will act based on the wind. Now, the first thing we have here to input is our basic wind speed, which is measured in meter per seconds. This value can be obtained, like I said before, either from the other and regional planner of your state or from the weather scientist. So, based on this structure, the wind speed of this structure, the, based on this structural design, the wind speed on the terrain or the area where this building is to be sited is 75 meters per second. That is the wind speed of the area where this building will be sited. Now, the, the minimum, this is the maximum wind speed, and the minimum wind pressure, which is measured in kilopascal or in kilonewton, is 0 0.78. That is based on the area, based on this structure. I have, we have made investigations and have gotten our, our wind data and our surrounding and terrain data of this particular area where this building is to be sited. So for you, this value is not a constant or a default value to be used for wind. No, you will have to go and collect your own wind data from your other and regional planner or from a weather scientist at the place where, this, where your building is to be sited. Then the next thing to add is um, the primary wind load. We, we all know that wind goes in different direction. There is no particular angle where a wind goes. So at this point, we will leave the, the wind angle at zero degree. Then the next thing we'll enter is terrain and surrounding. At this place, this place is just uh, telling you to explain how the area where these buildings to be sited are. The area in the sense that looking at this input here, this input explains more on this on this picture right here on this box. Now, the first value that we have to input is the H0, which is measured in meter. The H0 is, the, is telling you from your building, for example, this, this is our building right now that we are designing for. Now, the H0 is telling you on the terrain of this building or the place where, where you want to site or build this structure that you're designing for. What is the height of obstacle or obstruction or the nearest building closer to the, to the place where you want to site this, this structure? So what is the height of the obstacle? Is it a building? Is it a tree? Whatever it is, is it a mark? Whatever it is, what is the height of the structure? Now, based on this on this design, the 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 kind of obstacle found in the area where we are building this structure are trees. So, and, and, and looking at the trees, we observe that the trees are not higher than three-story building. So, the height of our tree of that tree is, from our eye observation, is nine point eight meters. But if your building, if you if you're setting your building or the or, or your structure on let me say in a town or in a city where there are other buildings, then you will have to identify what kind of building is there. Is it a high rise building? If it's a high rise building, what is the height of that high rise building closer to the building where you're meant to site the building? So on our own case, what we found in that surrounding is just trees. And the height of that tree is no more than three story building. So we so we took 
9.5 as the height of the obstacle closer to our building. Then, now this is the wind, you can see there. So when the wind comes, it will first of all hit the obstacle. Now, if your building is planned the obstacle, when it hits the obstacle, there will, there will be a refraction. Now, the, the wind will not have to um, diverge up before it hits your, your structure. At that point, it has break the wind, the effect of the wind speed already. No, so the, so, so the wind that now refracts to your building will not be that effective to your building. That is why you have to put the distance of, the, of, of an obstacle or building or anything closer to the building where you want to site your, your building. Then the next thing right now is to impute the distance. What is the distance? The distance between, the, between your own building where you want to site the, the building to the obstacle. In our own case, the distance is 15 meters. 15 meters, we measured, we measured from the point where we want to site this seven story building to the, to the point where we have an obstacle. It gave us 15 meters. So you have to input the distance from the point where you want to site your, 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 your building to, to the point where, to the point, to, to, to the distance or point where you have the nearest obstacle. Then the, then the next thing we have here is our main sea level. Now, main sea level simply means you will have to locate the nearest sea or the nearest river closer to the to your to the site where you want to site or build or erect this structure. Now you will have to measure the mean sea level, the height of the sea against the height of, of your building or the height of the land where the building is recited. Now in our own area, the sea is very far away from the building. So we let we so so the so there will be no so before the wind effect comes from the wind from, from, from the sea directly to our building other 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 obstacles just as such so, 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 so as um trees building have already break the wind speed to a minimum level to to, to, to or to a minimum um speed where it will not have effect that much again on our structure so at that point we took our mean sea level to be as default 100. then the next thing we have here is our distance to sea upwind we will just leave this as default because it doesn't necessarily mean except your building is directly on a coastal area. If your building is directly on a coastal area, that means at the seafront, then you will have to make proper investigations and get accurate results on these two values, the, the distance or the relative height of the mean sea level and the distance of the up of the sea upwind. You will have to get these two values correctly or at least, even, even though it's not correctly, at least equivalent to correct. Then. We, the next thing we have here is the site type. Now, if you click on the arrow drop down, you will see town and country. I'll quickly explain for you what this thing really means, the town and country really means. Now, I will start from country. Country simply means like, like a countryside, just as it, it is on the, on the music, countryside music. It means that where people are not really residing. So, country here simply means if your, if your building is to be sited on a place, like nearest to the forest, where it's not close to community, where people are living, or where it's not close to where we have adverse buildings. Then, if your building is set closer or far away from the city, then you have to choose country. You're indirectly, you're indirectly telling the, the, the software that your building is sited far away from the city, closer to the forest, and where you have a lot of trees. But if you choose town, you're, te you're, you're telling the software that your building is sited directly on the city where you have other buildings where you have other buildings structures towers and all that then but on this uh on this example uh this this, this structure is sited on a countryside where we have a lot of trees near the forest so i will choose country then the next thing to choose right now is the wind is the wind code what code are you using to design your structure for this lesson we are using B british code of passage which is BS810 for the structural elements. But for the wind speed, we we'll use BS6399 part 2, So I'll quickly click on this place and choose BS6399. If you have other codes to choose, just as the American code, the Euro code, and the Euro code ANES, then you, which is the Singapore ANES, then you also choose your, your code. But for this lesson, we are using British code of practice. So we are designing our structure based on the, on a wind speed using British code of practice. Then, the next thing that is also important here is the structure property. You will leave this dynamic factor as checked. Then, you click on the building type. What type of building is this? If you click on this category here, you click, and you see a, 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 a lot of categories already given to you. Now, the first thing here we have is weathered steel clad, un, unclad 
frames. Now, this is already ruled off because this is not a steel building. This is a concrete building, a reinforced concrete building. So we will move to the next. This is a bolted steel and reinforced concrete on clad frames, which is already ruled off because we are, this is not a bolted steel structure. The next thing we have here is a potter shed. Now, as if, if you're clicking each of these items, each of these checks, you will be seeing that it, the kind of structure here will be changing. So if you click this now, this is a steel and our building is not a steel, it's a reinforced concrete. And also this is a bolted and our building we are designing for is not a bolted steel. If you go to the next potter shed, we are not designing a potter shed. If you go to the next frame building. Now, this is almost like a sampling, a, 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 an example of what we are designing for. Now, but the only thing that is different from here is because we have walls all around our buildings. We have walls all around our buildings. We, if I open the 3D view, you will see it. We have walls surrounding our building and we don't have walls surrounding only the lifts and staircase area. So this is ruled off. Now, if I click on this one now, we have framed building. Yes, our building, our structure, which, which we have modeled is, um, framed. Now, frame building, which structural, which, okay, frame building with structural, sorry, frame building with structural walls around lifts and stair with additional masonry subdivision walls now what this simply means that around along around the buildings you have a structural walls you are, or you have walls around the buildings around the lift around the stair and also around the entire buildings so this is what we are designing for i'll quickly check this and say okay so with this with this input we have indirectly said that your wind will be affected by that your structure will be affected by a wind speed of 75 meter per second and the height of the obstacle or the nearest building closer to your to your building is 9.5 meters high and the distance from your building to that obstacle or to, or to that building is 15 meters now with these settings you have to now click ok once you click ok automatically the the, the wind load or the wind effect applies directly from the from the story one from the first story down to the roof or to the last story and these are the wind effects the mass then you click on ok and then you click on analyze but we are not going to analyze this structure on this lesson because the purpose of this lesson is just to show you how to add weight load to your structure use in in total structure so what i will say in the next video i will show i will analyze this building and then we will do a proper concrete design based to this lesson and then you just say close so with this now you have said that the that, that a wind speed of 75 meter per seconds is affected by this structure. Now, and you're also saying that from, from a distance of 50 meters, there is, there is a structure or a tree or a building having a height of 9.5 meters, just as we, just, just as we, we, we inputted on this area. Let me show you. We, we, we inputted on this area where we say that the distance from our building to the next obstacle or, or building is 15 meters. Let me just show you so that you understand what I mean again. Um, it's loading up. Just let's just go down a bit. So it's very good to apply a wind load or a wind effect. Okay. So right now. Okay. So. So this is it. We say that the distance from our building to the next obstacle that we have here is 15 meters, and the height of that building or that obstacle is 9.5 meters high. Okay, so I'll just say okay again. So this is how you apply your wind load to your structure while performing the structural design of a building higher than 10 meters in total structure. Thank you.